ಜನತರಂ ತವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಹಿರಿವ ಮಲಿನ ತರಂ ತವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಹಿರಿವ ಮಲಿನ ತರವು ತವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮನೋಜಿ
little juice of a naughty bee. It's just what it says. A somewhat unusual subject for Indian dance, but we thought we'll take you through this adventure so this unlikely creature doing unlikely things, the naughty bee. Friends, I'm Maya Kulkarni, my, the originator and choreographer of this piece. Our bee is very mischievous, playful, funny, a little weird sometimes, but she loves dancing and she is relentlessly curious about the world. Born in a hive hanging by the temple in Chidambaram, she has heard all her life the sounds and songs of worship to the residing deity. But the temple walls can't hold her, nor the bee-like things like flitting from a flower to flower, you know, tasting honey. She is for places unknown, discovering people well beyond the horizon. So off she flies to the west, to Turkey, then circles back to China, and then treks back to Spain. It's all fantastic adventure, a great, great delight. The swaying hips of the village maiden in the mountains of Turkey, in the villages, the dignified, graceful, mincing steps of the courtesans at the court of the Ming emperors. Did she really fly over the great wall? She wonders. She is absolutely impressed and tickled by her own adventure and treasures the story so that she could tell it to her friends back in the temple. Then she flies off further and recalls, yes, the martial artists, they were so aggressive, the posture was so erect. What fun! I should tell that too. On to Spain and the bull ring. There is a charging bull, snorting and fierce and big. And there is that handsome, proud, beautiful matador, entranced by both, she watches absolutely horrified at the bull as it charges and does the only thing anyone would do, take flight. But it has been a long journey, many adventures passed, time to go home. She returns bubbling with stories to tell to her friends, delighted in the little temple dance that she knows so well and she's done it all her life. Gather around you all, I have so much to tell you, she says to her friends. They simply buzz around. So she then ignores them and sinks, in, sinks into her own daydreaming, thinking of new adventures, new journey, new countries to go and new places to go. The naughty bee. Thank you.
Thank you, Preeti, Sonali, Mayaji, and Rukuni for your powerful and very creative performances tonight. We will begin with our panel discussion, and I am incredibly honored and humbled to introduce to you our moderator, who really needs no introduction. Padma Bhushan Kumudini Lakya is a maverick in her own right and has gone against the grain many times over to add new sensibilities in Kathak, which has influenced the presentation of all Indian classical dance. She holds many accolades, and nationally and internationally. To name a few, the highest civilian award, Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan, awardee of the Sangeet Natak Academy, Guru Achan Maharaj Award, Sumit Charat Ram, among many others. She has also been honored by numerous cultural institutions for her unique contributions to the world of Indian dance. A career in dance spanning over 70 years, after a distinguished profession as a solo dancer, Kumadini Lakya has established the Gabin Center for Dance in Ahmedabad, India in 1964. Lakya's performing company, Kadam, has toured exclusively around the world, where it has received acclaim and connoisseur's appreciation. She continues to lecture on creativity and performance in dance at universities in India, the USA, and countries in Europe. Kumadini Lakya has served on numerous prestigious organizations for dance, namely Vice President of the Council International De La Dance Paris, Executive Board Member of the Sangeet Natak, Natak Academy, New Delhi, uh, was the Chairperson of the Gujarat State Sangeet Natak Academy, was a member of the Executive Committee of the Kalakshetra Foundation in Chennai, and also a Cornell Professor at Swarthmore College, Pennsylvania, USA. On a personal note, as I mentioned, she is my guru, and I'm indebted to her knowledge as a mentor, as a visionary. Uh, she instills in all of her students the desire to search, to question, and to create. And for all of that, I am so very grateful. Without further ado, please welcome Padma Bhushan Kumudini Lakia. Thank you, Padma. Thank you. Namaste, Gumi Ben. Namaste, Namaste. Namaste, everybody. It is so wonderful to have you here. It is such an honor and privilege for all of us to have you here, a part of our festival as a moderator. And I'm really excited for you to meet the artists. You've already seen their work, but I feel they share um, your vision of wanting to explore dance uh, on your own terms and to go beyond. And so I'm really happy and thank you so much for being here. So I, I think I try my best, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> You're actually not old school. <laughs> you are a trailblazer in many, many respects. Um, so I think we can go ahead and introduce and bring on the artists. <coughs> Okay, how shall we start? Where do yes. we start? Yes. Where so do I we start? Quickly, uh, we have with us uh, Preeti, Mayaji, with Sonali, and Rukmini. Um, start with Rukmini? Uh, sure. Yeah. Rukmini, uh, I saw your, your mother, we are Very beautiful. Thank you. Devoid with all its baggage. <laughs> and it was very beautifully done. You are beautiful. And the spatial context that you chose, that door, my God, wonderful, you see. And uh, I love to see that, uh, the way you did it. And uh, very minimal and to the point and Bharatanatyam the way it should be done. Very nice. Second piece, it is expectations, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was interesting the way you developed a movement, you know, from uh, and uh, your the arm movement and on your face, the way you 
uh, did it. I think aesthetics, your aesthetics is fine. But uh, I didn't quite understand the relationship of your walking on that uh, pathway towards mm -hmm. the water. Yeah. I believe you are a diver. <laughs> yeah. water. Shown us some movements there. Huh? Anyway, when that that uh, Bharatanatyam piece was pretty, it was wonderful how you chose that the salt thing. You know, I have very very uh, very clear memories of my association with salt. To do the dance, but it's my association. One is when Mahatma Gandhi did his salt march. That was 1930, the year of my birth. <laughs> huh? And uh, uh, it's still in our memory uh, why he did it. It is because the British had levied a tax on salt. And said salt was something which every, even the poorest of the person needed for his food. And that was the salt march. And we saw a lot of salt at that time, white. Now the second is that about 50 years ago, uh, in India, it was, con white was never considered a color, you know. White was not considered a color. So I thought that white, white is a very intense color. I did one choreography where all the costumes were white. The wings were white. The backdrop was white. The only thing was not white was the faces of the dancers and their arms, you know. And uh, I was quite... Uh, Please with that, see all that white. And I was able to prove that white is a color. Yeah, and it, it has to be considered a color. So when I saw these white feeds, first it was all water, huh? One hardly any salt before. And there was a sky, beautiful. The sky was beautiful. And the white water. But your movement, I don't know if it had any relationship to, to your choice of the, of the place, of, the, uh, of what you chose, the salt ponds. Was there any, can you tell me that? Your, your yes. movement. You know, first, yes, you were, first you were walking in the water, and then at one point you sat down and, you know, so can you, can you explain? Yes, uh, Umi Ben, yes. Uh, I've seen your piece, the white wings and the white uh, costumes. And I must say, yeah. before I say anything, I'm deeply humbled and deeply touched just talking to you right now because I grew up watching your work and I'm feeling very emotional at this point. I'm going to keep that, uh, as, you know, in a place and uh, respond to you uh, very, very uh, deeply. Yes, you rightly brought up Gandhi Ji because uh, that was also I was telling um, the organizers of the festival when I chose this site. Uh, I'm going to return to the site. This is a terrain through the salt development. It changes face. Right now, it's the fallow period. It looks very different every time. There is a preparation and the salt panning happens. It's different. And yes, salt has been very, very important because this history, it's its part of our Swarajya, you know, and it is the stuff that raised a whole nation to, to fight, to stand up. And this question of standing became very, very important. You know, salt of the earth, how do you stand? For me, that is the connection to my training and to my roots. You know, why do you stand? Where does the body begin and end? Is it with my feet? Is it below my feet? Now, this particular salt pan has got a lot of clay soil and uh, it's got various, various uh, sedimented layers and it's unforgiving and vast as a landscape. Uh, 
my desire right now with dance is also to see what dance can do what is it required to do what is it required of the body to do in a place how do you respond what is the movement that comes out of being there just the act of standing was such a challenge in this place enormously windy enormously slippery so the challenge of just standing moving and the collaboration with the filmmaker who wanted the movement to be a catalyst not the center of the whole enterprise but to be a catalyst to allow a viewer an outsider a commoner to look at the space and have a sense of its materiality what is that sand what is that soil what is that um, say that again say, the, say that. The, the filmmaker and i collaborated and it was a desire to whatever he filmed or whatever i did by way of movement in the site had to somehow speak for the materiality whether it's the wetness or the soil or the clay or the act of being vertical or horizontal the materiality of the site must somehow jump out at the viewer and what the dance is is only after that or behind that uh, so it was a very conscious choice to be extremely simple not to overwhelm the site um and we will be returning two more times to the same place uh to to see what kind of an expression it's um uh pushing for us to ask so i offer that to you i i would say i saw more of that in your second piece in that construction site which was right. really very really interesting and um, in your second piece i saw more of that you know the body and the and the way you stand and the way you move and you know uh, the site was beautiful and the photography in that was just marvelous all those beautiful hues and the colors and the lighting was very very good you must congratulate the photographer for me on that i will i promise yeah. you i will it was very beautiful and uh, then you danced on a little kind of a platform you know first was in that construction site and then it was on that little platform where uh, i don't know you sometimes went off it you came on it and i didn't quite understand that why did you go off it if you Because have if you have the market or pace then why do you go off and why do you come on it you know because it is a question of borders and how we deal with the idea of being contained inside a border um the th the thought of an empty space when what is a space how do we define a space is what i ask myself a space is a the architecture of its walls the surfaces etc b a space is defined by the actions it witnesses so if the space has witnessed an action then there is a memory of that action in the space even when the body leaves there is a so this is uh, the desire to sort of offer that as a as a memory you know uh, we don't have to watch a thing we live in the memory of the thing the memory of the, yeah what what remains what remains yes. in your memory uh, yes. what remains of the movement yes. in the space in yes that and in that place and it it sits in the viewer in in my hope that it sits in the viewer in their body in their um, yeah, you know i also, i to feel yeah. that she dance after it is uh, it has been done you know afterwards you see it in space the memory of it in space is that's what you want to say that right I, yeah very, exactly yeah very very you people are very uh, uh intelligent i must say all you young dancers of today huh? uh we were always uh, count down by our gurus you know like you must do this and you must not do that and you must do that it was always must not and must you see for us in, in our time but uh, you people are free to do what you want and to use your body the way you want and to understand what your body wants to do and the space around it beautiful the space is very important 
you know, doubts, isn't it? What it you is create space. What you create in space. Yeah, like uh, when at school, you know, we're told that uh, uh, straight line is two points, right? But yes. In uh, in uh, here in dance, the guru gives you put your hand here and put your hand there. The dance happens in between those two. That's so beautiful. That is so beautiful, and that is so true. The dance happens in between these two points. Like the points are not important. It's the straight line which is important, right? It's yes. the same thing with dance. Dance is what remains in the space when you've used it. What you've done with the space, and that's choreography. You see, designing the space. Whatever dance, whether it is Bharatanatyam, whether it is Kathak, modern, whatever it is, it's what remains in the space, what you created, designing of the space, right? It is true. It is true. And I must say here that it is because of, uh, because of people like you who broke certain barriers, and I was saying this to Uth Uthra also, that there is a whole generation which kept pushing at these frontiers for, for Rukmini or Sonali or for myself to do what we do today is because there is a certain evolving ecology of experimentation that you have all done, without which we cannot be doing or asking what we do. And whatever freedom we are trying to work with is a hard-won freedom also, but we owe it a lot to the generation beneath us. Very true. Congratulations, all of you. You really are doing very good work. I want to go back to Rukmini. Yeah. Rukmini, you know, when you start, uh, what was that? Uh, expectations. Yeah. You know, when you start a moment and then the smi smile grows, you know. Uh, how did you think of that? How, um, how did you think of that? I think a large portion of it was um, motivated by one is like how we end up seeing our dance, one. And the second is how um, the digital medium has impacted us as a generation. I think even us is a little bit less than the younger generation. And there were some articles I was reading and some documentaries about how many um, Teenagers commit suicide uh, because of, you know, like presenting or taking a particular selfie or, you know, like how they need to project themselves to the world. And sometimes it also extends to how we see our dance, right? So especially when we're in a classical form, we want to have a certain aesthetic. We want our line right. We want our hand right. Uh, we want our aramandi right. And how far do we go until yeah. like, how far do we go? At, at which point do we actually lose the dance? and just become the aesthetic, you know? Yeah. So I think it was uh, both those things that, um, there were several things that was about how, um, not just how we expect ourselves to be, but also about how we uh, try to live up to expectations of others, of society, of people through different medium. So the entire piece is motivated by multiple things. So the smiling is like how people have to, like one is about, getting the right selfie and keeping on smiling for no reason at all. And also how you need to smile many times when you actually are feeling so many different emotions inside you. Um, the, the idea of being real is often lost in this, in this world or this society that we uh, live in now because we hide behind texts and messages. So actually meeting someone and seeing how they're actually feeling is becoming less and less, you know, so we, so there's so many things that are hidden. And I think all of that, like you were asking about the running. So it's also about, you want to run away from it all sometimes. And that, it's about, run away with, did you, did you want to do that? To run away yeah, from it? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I have that running as a, as a <laughs> motive at the end. <laughs> Because I do feel like that as well, you know, personally, I do feel like running away from it. So I think that that's what motivated it. But I obviously I use dance because like 
correcting my hands or my neck or my head is is how I can, I can well understand that. Yeah. From experience. <laughs> but I tell you what, you see when you when you did it on the face, it was very yeah. clear that you are beginning something, you know. Yeah. Starting a touch and then then another touch. But when you did it with your hand, it was yeah. different. Right. It was different. Like it was wrong and right. Right. You yeah. see, that was different to what you did with your face. Correct. To what you did with your hand was different. Correct yeah. or not? Am I right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're so very right. Kinds of, two different kinds of uh, expectations for me. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Like with the hand, I think it was more related. It was a little bit more personal with respect to dance, I think, and what that could often project. Um, so it need not just be my hand or the rightness of wrongness of things, even within, um, I guess, with society or sometimes like, for example, I'll tell you, I guess this is personal. Like when you go somewhere for like an event, I like to be in my pajamas and, and T-shirt all the time. Like, uh, that's how I live. But now I'm wearing a nice kutta and I have makeup. And so um, there is a certain expectation even from, like, um, from society and from things which, which is considered right and wrong. But also, who defines that right and wrong? Does society define it? Do, like, even within dance, like you said that there was... Uh, especially in uh, your generation, there was like, this is correct and this is not correct. So now with aesthetics, there is a, an exact right and wrong with with dance, right? Or even that is varying sometimes from one class to another, from one Barney to the next. So in some ways, it's like, what expectations do you fulfill and what do you not? Um, I think it was a, it was a mix of all of that. So there are a lot of questions I wrote down and I tried to see how my body was doing. What is correct and what is not, what decided by all those gurus, right? Right? Yeah, at one point, yeah, at, correct. But I think you people are now trying to find out really, like Atreus, Priti is trying to find out what is correct, yeah. what is for her body, you know, and for her space, for all her, you know. Hello, Maya Ji. Hello, it's lovely ah, to many, see you from ah, Many, many, many years. It's been years. Many yes. years. Many years. It is lovely to see you. Um, about this, I just want to say two, three things and let Sonali talk. Um, yeah. the, the idea was to really get away. We're not trying to do anything in uh, Bharatanatyam, although Sonali is a Bharatanatyam dancer. We're not trying to do that at all. We're truly trying to erase borders physically, geographically, literally. Uh, so uh, the idea was uh, there was something to do with nature. It had to do something with nature. So Sonali said, why don't we do this idea that we had uh, about the uh, day in the life of a bee. What does a bee do? The usual thing. And you can see, see the bee hovering over the flowers and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we went into mythology, uh, with a lot of mythology connected with the bee. Very serious, dark mythology and frivolous one. Uh, but that didn't appeal because it wasn't really going to hold together. So we decided that we would just create a totally fantasy piece. It is a fantasy piece. But the most important thing is I think majority of the in the dance, Indian dance, one doesn't tackle the Hasya Rasa at all. Okay, it is a very difficult. In fact, it is far more difficult to do uh, to do something humorous or to do something that deals with Hasya Rasa than to do other which are very much part of the tradition. So it was a risky enterprise to begin with. Um, it's also work in progress. Um, but we sort of just built, begin to look at some kind of moments that could uh, convey the idea of the bee waking up. And we made, gave bee a very human character. 
okay so she is supposed to be uh, you know a, a flirtatious playful uh, a little weird trying to imitate everything that she sees wherever she goes and of course not succeeding it's she is a b so her moments are very awkward and be you know weird but she delights in it you know that she has been able to do so that's the main kind of thing it's nothing very deep it's nothing uh, not meant to be it was never meant to make any profound points of any kind it was just she, very light hearted yeah when she took the flowers this is when flirtation when she took the flowers yes in the beginning you know when she comes leaves her high yeah. she's sort of doing it says i love this uh, thing and i don't like that i go to some other flower but then she decides that she is going to leave her usual environment and fly off to other places and that's where she begins her journey <clears throat> where she sees all these various things <clears throat> first in turkey where she sees you know uh, folk dancers kind of just village having a great time and she's delighted by it and she hovers over it and she tries to imitate some of the movements of these people and of course not meant to get it it is just fun it's just pure fun then she flies off to other other places uh, like china and comes back to spain and is, there is a whole scene about the um, you know the matador and the um, and uh, the bull uh and you know the bull she sort of imitating both but when the bull charges you know she quickly runs flies off and runs away and, yeah and comes back to the temple so anyway i don't want to trace this entire journey for you uh but my point was that it was meant to be in that way it is never it was not meant to be anything else it's not making any uh it's not an attempt to develop any new style or anything it is simply expressing certain ideas that's all so i'll let sonali speak uh, more about it how she felt or what she think thought about it um uh, i have to admit kumi ben it was quite a challenge to do this piece because none of, majority of it is not in the classical vein um so there was a lot of letting go um and erasing borders so to speak um uh, there was what your classical training bharatanatyam yes yes kundan so um there was a lot of you know i myaji constructed the work in a way that you know challenged my me to look at the dance in a very different way and the metaphor of the bee trying these movements is really actually how i felt doing the movements <laughs> some of the movements there was a lot of research also that went into the work um i had to see how these movements were actually done and then try to do it in a way that felt like i was really struggling with it um so there was kind of a building up and then a deconstructing of the movement um and it, it was challenging as as maya ji pointed out hasyam is is a challenging rasa to portray and to be very lighthearted and not to be weighed down by some you know some profound expectations of your message or anything it kind of felt freeing and liberating in in many ways to do this kind of work so you know it's it's a very playful fun i think piece i want you to see uh, mitali this is mitali i want to introduce mitali namaste bahul didi Namaste. <laughs> And uh, she's a very beautiful dancer, Kathak. Ah, okay. If you can follow, video clip, video clip. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, that was lovely talking to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Uttara, Uttara, lovely seeing you. Maya, after so long. Look love. forward. Nice to see you, Kumi Ben. Nice, lovely. So Arul, this was very nice. Thank you for having me here.
Thank you so much for joining in today. Uh, we have three more evenings of performances, uh, so please check it out. Following two wonderful uh, workshops, please check it out on our website. Uh, we have really exhilarating performances and really diverse uh, disciplines that we are showing all coming from India, but are being practiced all over the diaspora. So thank you again. Have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.